This is the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are numerous antenna lines drawn on this top plastic cover which are the light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna which is located here. We can also see the back of the top earpiece speaker which is located here. And this top earpiece speaker has the little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. Looking at the other side, we have a better look at the speaker, and we can see an area of graphite film which helps to transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board which need to be disconnected by popping them off. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel main, and a 5 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, the LED flash is located here, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The SIM card and memory card readers located on the other side, there's a proximity sensor, and there's a graphite pad on the back to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see a fairly thick thermal pad which sits on top of the processor, and a small one over the chip on the corner. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker assembly, and this assembly also has an antenna line drawn on it, which is the light gray color line. We can see that this flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the screen cable. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly itself, giving you access to disconnecting the flex cable for the screen, and then you would have to gently peel off this flex cable for the screen from the frame, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure we run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. Now we can disconnect the flex cable for the fingerprint sensor, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see the primary microphones located here, and there's a gray rubber gasket around the charger port. Here's a look at the other side. Now we have a better look at the x-axis vibrator motor. The fingerprint sensor is held down with some adhesive. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the bottom speaker opening, as well as the microphone opening on the bottom and on top. And for those who are worried about inserting the SIM ejector tool in the microphone hole, both the microphone and filter are seated above the hole or opening, and there's a 90 degree turn so it's like an L shape. So the SIM ejector tool won't damage the microphone or filter. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off.
Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located over here, and if you need to replace that, you'd have to just gently peel off the flex cable from the frame, and lift up and pull out this metal bracket, which is holding the assembly inside of the frame. And finally, there's a liquid damage indicator sticker located on the top corner, which is seated on the frame underneath the sim reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.